everybody. Welcome to our very first uh, wine seminar. I'd appreciate it if everyone out there would mute their volume. That will uh, mute your microphone. That'll help us make sure that we uh, keep this going. Guys, come on in. Oh, that's their house. For those who don't know us, uh, we're the Maltzman family. We own Continental Divide. We're the founders of the winery. And we really appreciate you guys being here today. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you for joining us. Um, so we're going to do this every Friday. Um, our plan is to do this at 8 p.m. Colorado time, although if people think that's uh, not a great time, shoot us an email and let us know. But our plan right now is 8 p.m. every Friday. We'll have a different mini seminar. They'll last anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Colorado time, yes, thank you. And our very first topic tonight is the five best and one worst wine movies of all time. So I'm really excited to talk to you about this. I have my glass of wine here. I hope all of you do as well. Uh, if not, we'll take about a 30 second pause for you to go pour a glass of wine because these lectures clearly call for some libation. <laughs> Maybe continental divide wine. <laughs> That's on a Marie. All right, uh, if you would, Marlon, if you would mute your, uh, I recognize that voice. <laughs> I don't know how, how do I do that? So everybody, my very first movie okay. that I want to talk about tonight is my all time favorite wine movie. It's called Bottle Shock. Bottle Shock was produced in 2008. It's an hour and 50 minutes long. It stars Chris Pine, for those who've ever watched the movie Star Trek. He's the new Captain Kirk in the new series of Star Trek. It's got Alan Rickman, who's a phenomenal actor, Bill Pullman, and Freddie Rodriguez. That's a heart. <laughs> That's a heart, okay. This is the true story of the Judgment of Paris. And for those who don't know what the Judgment of Paris is, it's really the event in history that put American wines on the world map. In 1976, in honor of America's bicentennial, Steve Spurrier, a British wine merchant living in Paris, was desperate to get some publicity for her um, for his wine for his wine shop. And so as a publicity stunt, he came up with the idea of doing a blind wine tasting, the best of France versus the best of America. He somehow managed to talk the French Society de Vin, that's the French Wine Society, into uh, doing the competition. Of course, they did have some prerequisites in order to agree to it. It had to be done entirely in France. All the wines had to come to France because yeah. they were convinced that the wines would go bad in transit. Again, if you've got your volume on, I'd ask you please to mute your volume. Um, this is a great movie. Most of the movie, it starts in Paris as he comes up with the idea, but most of the movie is filmed in the Napa Valley as Steve Spurrier comes to California in search of drinkable California wines. He, of course, being British and thinking that everything in Europe is great and everything in America sucks, <laughs> thinks that he's gonna find nothing but jug wine, but he's quite surprised to find Chateau Montalena, which is Bill Barrett's winery, falls in love with their Chardonnay uh, and brings it back to the competition. And for those who don't know, I'm not gonna give away too much because this is history, you probably know it already. The American wines beat the French in every single category. It was considered a huge shock to the French wine world and it really was the beginning of the world opening up to the idea that other countries could make phenomenal wines other than just France. Um, remember the name Bo Barrett because he's gonna come up in one of our other movies. Another fun fact from this movie is that although the whole movie is really about the Napa Valley, it's actually filmed in Sonoma because the Napa Valley, by the time 2008 rolled around when this was filmed, was just too developed to look like the Napa Valley did in the 1970s. So Brenda and Mark Lorman, who were the producers, they filmed almost the whole movie in Sonoma, except for the scenes that were filmed at Chateau Montalena. And if you go to wine tasting at Chateau Montalena, they have a bottle shock tasting experience that's a lot of fun. Some other sort of fun facts from this movie. There is a field hand that works at their winery. His name is Gustavo Brambilla. He's a real person. And he actually saved up all of his money and opened up a winery in Napa. It's still there. It's quite successful. It's called Gustavo Thrace. And if you ever go visit the Napa Valley, right across the street from the Oxbow Public Market, which is a great sort of 
enclosed open air market where you can go eat food. And the cheeseburger place. And the cheeseburger place, Gott's Cheeseburgers is there. It's the absolute best cheeseburger uh, in the wine country. But go to Gustavo Thrace Winery. He's right across the street and it's a great success story. So um, a little fun fact, this movie is about a lot of different wines, but Chateau Montalena made Chardonnay, which is why I am drinking Continental Divide Winery Chardonnay in honor of it. Um, and a really fun thing to do while you watch this movie is do your own wine tasting. Pair up maybe a Colorado wine against a California wine or a Colorado wine or an any American wine against a French wine. Put them in bags so that people don't know what they're drinking and score them and see whether Colorado can beat California or America can beat France in your taste test. So that's Bottle Shock. It's available on Amazon. It's free on Amazon Prime if you have Amazon Prime. You can also watch it on Vudu and you can also rent it on iTunes. For centuries, the best wines in the world were made in France. And in 1976, I just read an article that said California is going to produce wine that will rival the finest of the French. Bonjour. They held a competition to prove it. I'm going to California to try and find some respectable competition. Hey, can we get a barrel sample for this French wine snob? He doesn't think we make real wine here. Against the French tradition. People make some pretty good wine in this area. My definition of palatable might be slightly different from yours. All they had. The cultivation of the vine is an art form. Was a dream. If one of us wins, we all win, right? Good luck for Napa. I'm sorry, sir, but FAA rules only allow you to bring one bottle of wine in your travel bag. I can't have these wines jostled about in cargo. I'll take one, and so will my husband. I'll carry one for you. Oh. <laughs> Discover the true story. La premier place. That shocked the world. <laughs> Bottle shock. Why don't I like you? Because you think I'm an ass, and I'm not really. I'm just British, and well, you're not. <laughs> So our second movie <clears throat> today that I want to talk about is Song. Song is a documentary movie. It was made in 2012. It's an hour and 34 minutes long. And one of the characters who appears in it is Bo Barrett, the character from uh, the movie Bottle Shock. So this is a movie about the hardest test you've never heard of. The Master Sommelier exam, it's been given for about 70 years. Only a few hundred people have ever, ever passed this test. It takes the average person about 10 years to pass it. And this movie follows the journey of seven candidates as they study for and try to take the, uh, the test. Some of the things that they have to do, they have to answer an oral test about worldwide knowledge where they could be asked any question about any wine from any country, from any year, anywhere in the world. There's a service category where they prove that they are the best of the best of sommeliers. <clears throat> and it ends with a blind tasting. And a blind tasting means each candidate has six glasses of wine. The wine is put in front of them. They know nothing about it. Only that three are white and three are red. And to pass the test, they have 22 minutes to taste them. And then they have to tell the examiner what country the wine is from, what varietal it's from, what winery it's from, and what year it's from for all six it's wines. Seriously, to pass. Crazy. It's a crazy hard test to pass. By the way, you might have heard about this test. It was in the news last year because there was a huge scandal, and one of the people in the movie is reported to possibly be involved. Um, normally, about five or seven people a year pass this test. Last year, 24 people passed the test. And then it came out that one of the master psalms had possibly leaked some of the information about the wines that were going to be in the blind taste test. And the entire exam was invalidated for all of the candidates. So a huge scandal, a huge shock to the people who'd studied. Some of them had been trying to take the test for 10, 15 years. Um, and one of the people who is in the movie, you see him talking extensively. Uh, he is a master sommelier. 
Nobody knows for sure if he's the person who leaked it, but there is only one master sommelier who's ever disappeared from the roster of registered master sommeliers to my knowledge. And so some people think that he may be the person involved, but nobody really knows for sure. Um, he was the proctor for four of the people that took the test that year. I believe he's acknowledged that. That movie is available on Hulu, Amazon, and Apple. So that is Song. Pat, can you tell him that I didn't want to watch it, but I loved it? Oh, yes. My wife says to tell you that she didn't want to watch it. She thought it sounded boring and loved it when she watched it. So watch Song. Um, it's a great movie. You have this plant, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, people have been dedicating their life to make something amazing out of it. It is living art, and you can't appreciate it until you consume it. It's a lot more than just grape juice. It's a drug, really. Salmiers are professionals that are supposedly experts about knowing about beverage and wine. So there's this diploma called the Master Sommelier Diploma. It's the highest achievement you can make. Uh, in the world of wine. Over 40 years, there's only been like 170 in the world. I cried when my parents died. I cried when my children were, uh, were born. The only other time outside of that that I cried was when I passed this exam. I've got to know every single wine on the planet. The regions, the sub-regions, the districts, the villages, it's in five languages. Why certain years were good, how to serve it, what to eat with every different kind of wine. Nothing else in my life has uh, been this difficult. When someone tells you this is something that a lot of people can't do, people either go, wow, that's impressive, or they say, wow, I want to do that. Douglas and falling down. I'm sure that as the week goes on, it'll probably just get worse. Is this happening right now? I don't know. You tell me. Oh, falling apart here. Absolutely brutal. This sucks. I told myself I can be him. I have to be him. I will be him. The next movie on our list today is called A Year in Burgundy. And there's actually three of these movies out, A Year in Burgundy, A Year in Porto, and A Year in Champagne. I've heard they're working on some others. But these are really cool documentaries that study that region for an entire year and usually follow five to seven of the different winemakers through their year, through the different seasons, through the harvest. But A Year in Burgundy was really my favorite because it really shows you the French wine culture um, of Bordeaux and Burgundy. It shows how, unlike the American tradition, where winemakers are very open and share what they're learning and share knowledge, thinking that if one winery gets better, we all get better. In France, they're incredibly secretive. They view it as like the recipe for Coca-Cola. They won't tell any other winery what they do or how they do it. Um, and most of their fields are harvested every year by volunteers. So one of the great things that the movie shows is that the different chateaus in order to attract the volunteers to harvest their grapes, they compete for who can treat them the best. They put them up. The wives of the, of the chateau owners cook amazing meals for the, for the volunteers. And it's really just a great immersion in, uh, in culture. It's an hour and 31 minutes long. It's available on Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, it is free on Amazon Prime. It's also available on Apple and on Fandango. My next recommended movie to pass time while you're trying to figure out what to do in quarantine <laughs> is Sideways. This is probably the best known wine country movie. Um, it was made in 2004. It's a bit longer, runs two hours and seven minutes. Actually has a 97% Rotten Tomatoes rating. It, stalled, it stars, pardon me, Paul, G Paul Giamatti, Thomas Church, and Virginia Madsen. And it's the story of Miles, who's an aspiring novelist obsessed with Pinot Noir wine, as he takes one of his friends named Jack, who's kind of a failed actor, to California's wine region in the San Ynez Valley as sort of a last hurrah before Jack gets married. The two could not be more mismatched. Jack is an incurable seducer and womanizer. Miles is an incredibly shy, 
chronically depressed and unsinkably pessimistic individual. And the two of them have all kinds of uh, escapades through wine country. Um, this is also the movie that is reported to have killed Merlot for yeah. almost five years. Um, there is a great scene in the movie where Miles announces that he's not having Merlot. He almost screams it out loud. If anybody has Merlot, I'm leaving. Merlot sucks. Um, and that one line and that one scene from the movie caused sales of Merlot to plummet in America by 50% shows the power of one movie. What's ironic, however, is if you read the book sideways, Miles doesn't hate Merlot because he doesn't like Merlot. Miles hates Merlot because his ex-wife only drank Merlot. So the movie killed the American Merlot industry for no reason at all. Um, Merlot is really a wonderful, wonderful um, grape varietal, easy to drink, kind of goes with anything. It's like a Cabernet Sauvignon, but softer. If you haven't tried a Merlot in a while, Check out a Continental Divide Merlot or really a Merlot from anybody. I think you'll like it. And obviously, I recommend watching this movie with a bottle of Merlot. Um, this movie is available on Apple, Voodoo, Amazon, and also on Redbox. Let me show you how this is done. Hold the glass up and examine the wine against the light. You're looking for color and clarity. Now, stick your nose in it. Maybe some strawberry. Oh, there's just a flutter of like a like a nutty Edom cheese. When do we drink it now? Mmm. Are you chewing gum? No. Spit it out. Get married on Saturday. Here's my last week of freedom. We're gonna play some golf, eat some great food, and we're gonna send you off in style. It's gonna be great. Miles, these girls wanna party with us. If they wanna drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. Oh, no, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot! Oh, I wanna go back to my place. <laughs> yeah! There you are! We're celebrating Miles' book deal, published oh, author. Oh, what's the title? The Day After Yesterday. Oh, you mean today? Um, yeah. Why did you tell them that my novel was being published? You have been officially depressed for like two years now. We're gonna go have some fun, Miles. Do you remember fun? If a woman finds out how I live, and I'm not a published author, any interest she has is gonna evaporate real quick. You guys should stay for the weekend. No, we have to get back for the rehearsal dinner. What rehearsal dinner? All I can say is that my life is pretty plain. You're getting married on Saturday! Just now I could have told you some story, but I didn't. I told you the truth. And all I can do... I spent three years trying to extricate myself from a relationship that was full of deception. I am not Jack. The next movie that I want to tell you about is a movie called Red Obsession. This is a really interesting movie. It was made in 2013. It runs an hour and 15 minutes long. The whole movie is narrated by Russell Crowe, and it's the story of Bordeaux and the transformation that Bordeaux has gone through in the last few years. Um, Bordeaux is where the best of the best French wines are made. Many of these wineries will sell their bottles for up to $10,000 a bottle in advance before anybody tastes them. People actually buy futures in Bordeaux chateaus to have the right to a bottle that they might receive five years later and won't be ready to drink for 20 years after that. Um, the movie follows the tradition of these chateaus, many of which started in the Napoleonic era and how they became so famous. There's really five of them that, that control this industry. And it talks a lot about how the Chinese market and the new wealth in China has completely transformed Bordeaux and driven up the prices to where most of the rest of the Euro world cannot afford to drink the best of the best Bordeaux anymore. 
Um, I suggest you watch this with a great Bordeaux blend. Continental Divide makes several. Winter is Coming is probably our best known Bordeaux blend. Reflection is another good one. Summit is a good one. But any Bordeaux blend, which is a blend of Merlot, Cab Sauve, Petit Verdot. This is our Petit Verdot. I really love this, even by itself. Um, but go try that while drinking a blend, and you'll discover that some wineries make great, great Bordeaux blends, even if they're not one of the five uh, that are there. This movie is available on Apple, Amazon, and Voodoo. When I came here and they told me these are the best pieces of land, I thought, sure, but it's true. It's perfection. To make a great wine, it's not only a great terroir, a great chateau, but then it's the human factor. You know, you need love. It's more than a manufactured agricultural product. It's something closer to a miracle. The resilience of Bordeaux is quite amazing when you realize that this place has been able to survive revolutions, wars. Things can change in both directions. What we must protect is the wine. Right now, I think everyone has the wine fever. America used to be the biggest market in the world for these wines, and it's not anymore. The prices are just too high. No matter what, this is what I want. I want to bring it home. The auctioneer was going like 300,000, 500,000. Then suddenly, I just raised my pedal. I was at 1.5 million. <laughs> Today, China's probably got around 600 US dollar billionaires. That's more than the US. If a dozen mainland Chinese decided to buy everything in the marketplace, very soon it only takes a few people to corner the entire market. Chinese investors, yes, scooping up estates and vineyards across Bordeaux. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't even scratched the surface. And lastly, I have to leave you with what I ultimately believe is perhaps the worst wine movie ever made. <laughs> it makes me um, sad. This movie came out in 2019. It's called Wine Country. Runs an hour and 43 minutes. It stars a whole bunch of cast members from Saturday Night Live, written and directed by Amy Poehler. Also has Tina Fey in it. I was so excited to see this movie. I love Saturday Night Live. I thought it was going to be great. It was a disaster. The best acting could not pull this script out. Um, it's the story of five women who go to Napa to celebrate the 50th birthday of one of them. All of the women had worked together at a pizza restaurant, you know, 40 years earlier, 30 years earlier. Um, and as the alcohol flow, the real world uncertainties of their lives just collapses on them. Um, it's written and directed by Polar, but I'm sorry, my only viewing tip for this movie is drink and drink a lot while you're watching it um, and i hate to say that and it's only available on netflix so if you have netflix i guess you can watch it because it's free and maybe if you're on your second bottle of wine it won't be too horribly okay. bad but that's that movie <laughs> um. i want to sing a little ditty for my sweet very short friend rebecca who is turning 22 tomorrow wink wink I'm going to give you something you ain't never had before. Yes! Close your eyes. Oh! oh. oh cool. Yay! It's an amazing day in one country. When was the last time we were all together? I just want this to feel like a regular vacation. And somewhere in there, I'll just slide into 50. To Rebecca! Yeah. Age is just a number. What would you say your soul's age is? 18. Old enough to drink and bone. Don't have my own car yet, but I have a bike. 
I made itineraries. So everything we're gonna do minute by minute on the trip. We have lavender popping corn. That's not enough. Oh we're gonna keep God. this party going! What is that? Molly. <gasps> I did Molly in college, but she went back to her boyfriend. hey -o. Celebrating with a girls weekend, huh? Just remember, guys, whatever gets said, it's probably what the person has always felt, and the alcohol just let it out. This weekend is a mess. Ow! Something bit me! Oh my god, I'm gonna die! I can't even plan a fun birthday trip. If you were just to let go, everything will just fall into place. Will it fall into place? Do you think throwing the itineraries out the window was on the itinerary? Guess we'll never know. If we can't get to a weekend together, then I'm completely lost. Just get to the bush and you're fine from there! That's what she said. These women I have known for 20 plus years. And yeah, sometimes I want to tell this one to fuck off. You want me to fuck off? That's what intimacy looks like. This one's good. What's it called again? White wine. Ugh, freaking love it. Um, those are our five best One Morse movie. All of these seminars are going to be fairly short. I hope you will join us again next Friday night. <clears throat> we have some really fun topics. We haven't figured out what order we're going to do them in, but we will be releasing that soon. A lot of the CDW staff have volunteered to lead these. Carolyn, if you've ever met her, is from Australia. She's going to lead a talk on Australian wines. Um, Leanne's going to talk about some Oregon and Washington wines. Uh, Anna may come and join us to tell us why it's okay to put ice cubes in Chardonnay. Um, and we've got some wine trivia nights and some other fun events that will come up. So cheers. Thank you for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your support during this difficult time. And um, we're thinking of you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me.